Hey up guys, Ricky here, out walking the dog. There she is, nutter, but she's great. And in everything great really when you think about it. Every day above the dirt is a good one. So this tutorial is gonna be all about how to decipher key signatures on the stave so that you can then unlock the fretboard, unlock the chords in keys, unlock the scales, unlock the arpeggios. Cause the guitar is a transposable instrument. And because it's a transposable instrument, everything, all the frameworks, they slide and move up and down the neck. And what else slides and moves up and down the neck is something that I call the grid or the key grid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the key to the key grid so that you can learn chords in, in the key that you want to play in. So you're playing in A flat, not a problem. The grid, I'll show you how it superimposes on top, what chord grips you have to use. It's a wonderful thing. And this is one of four grids. And I'll be revealing those on my channel in 2022. That's the plan anyhow. And show you these frameworks of how the fretboard actually works. And there's no cycle of fifths involved in this video at all, because this is an easy way to work out these key signatures oh god I'm waiting for the comments now <laughs> right without further ado just let's crack on with the lesson eh? shall we okay let's go okay so why do you need to know your key signatures I've got some sheet music here and you can see here that we've got the tab but we also have something that gives us some extra information up here this is the key signature now you can see that this key signature if I just come in closely here it's got one sharp there we've also got the time signature next to it that's another video but that gives us all the information we need to know to be able to unlock the whole of the fretboard for chord scales and arpeggios I'm going to show you that in this lesson this is a case for reading tab because tab is nice and easy to get it under your fingers and to visualize what it is but the thing about tab that generally doesn't happen is it doesn't give you your rhythmic values and key information as well it's useful to be able to read both for the guitarist. I know some of you guitarists might not like that idea of reading music, but if you read key signatures, it will benefit you in the end. Right, let's get into this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a mnemonic. Yes, you know how I love mnemonics. This is a good one. This is gonna help you with knowing the order of the sharps and the flats. Now, if you've seen my other video, you know the one with Battle Ends and Down Goes Charles's Father, I'll put a card up here for that one. Then you'll know that I use this mnemonic. And this mnemonic that I use, Battle Ends and down goes Charles's father. That's really useful because if I do this, people remember stories. And this is why most mnemonics are stories. Now this is really cool because what we can do with this is we can use this to tell us and show us the order of the flats as they go on the key signatures. So the way to think of it is it's flats that way. Flats go that way. But a cool thing happens with this saying. It's almost like a palindrome. We can say this backwards and we get another story. The words aren't altered. This neat trick is super useful because if we look at it going backwards, and let's just say that together, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. That is the order of the sharps that go on the key signature. Now, how cool is that? Let's do some housekeeping first. C major has no sharps or flats. So when you look at the key signature and you see no sharps or flats, that's telling you you are in the key of C major or it's relative minor, A minor, because the key signature doesn't just represent the major, it also represents a relative minor. So this would be C major. Now this is a quick method. We're not gonna get into the cycle of fifths, like I said. We might get into that in a further tutorial when I go deep into tetrachords and show you how these sharps are manifested. But for now, let's just get it into your head, get it in your fingers, and then I can show you this grid thing because it's ace. One thing that you should just do is the key of F major. It has one flat and that flat is B flat. That's the first flat of this sequence here. B for battle. Just memorize that. 
Trust me, you're going to find it a lot easier at the end of the day. And to make things easier, I'm just going to work through all of the flat keys right now. So to show you that we're going to use this mnemonic to help us to find where we place the flats on the lines and the spaces in the key signature, I'm going to repeat the F major again. So, battle, that's F major. Just remember it, it's a lot easier in the long run. The next key signature we get, we go through the sequence now and we're going to add these to the key signature. A B flat, because flats are going this way, B flat and an E flat. Battle ends. Now here is the secret to knowing what key you're in in the flats. The next to last flat is the key. So as you can see, this is a B flat. So the key is B flat. Pretty simple. Let's carry on going through these keys. So the next key we're going to have is battle ends and. Battle ends and. And you can see when I add these flats, what it does is it modifies those notes. So this line is B. This line is E and this line is A. And now they have become B flat, E flat and A flat. Do you remember what I said about the next to last flat? That's that one there. And that is battle ends. So that's E flat. Let's carry on. Battle ends and down. Now we've got four flats. Let's find the next to last flat, which is here. Battle ends A and. So that's an A flat. That means the key is A flat. Let's move on. Battle ends and down goes. Now we've got five flats. The next to last flat is a D flat. Therefore, that's our key. Moving on, because we have seven flats to work through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Battle ends and down goes Charles's. Now we have a problem, because this is a C flat. Now if you think about it, what do we know C flat as? C flat is also enharmonically known as a B. So what this means is we have to double think this note, which is awkward. But the rule still applies. The next to last flat is the key signature. So this is a key of G flat. Now let's finish up with the last flat key signature. Battle ends and down goes Charles's father, an F flat, which is also known enharmonically as E. And don't forget, we've still got this C flat here, which is actually a B. So two notes in this key signature, we have to double think. But for sake of theory, let's circle that and we can see that is the key of C flat. So you can see we've worked out all the flat keys. Now it's time to work out the sharp keys. And we're going to use the mnemonic going backwards this time. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. So because it's father, I'm going to sharpen the F natural and turn it into an F sharp. That's what the sharp does. It alters any of these natural notes and turns them into sharps. This is how you work out the key when there are sharps in the key signature. What we do is we take the last sharp and we raise it a semitone, a half step, or if you want to think about it by using your guitar, then one fret. So play an F sharp, slide it up one fret towards the body of the guitar, because that's up, and that gives us a G. And this is the key signature for the key of G, and also for the relative minor, which is E minor. The next key is going to be Father Charles. Now you can see we've got a C sharp here. If we take a C sharp and we raise it a semitone, a half step, or one fret, then you can see a C sharp goes to a D, and that's the key. Carrying on, we can see that we get Father Charles goes, so we've got an F sharp, a C sharp, and a G sharp. If we take the last sharp and we raise it a semitone, which is the G sharp, then we'll find that we get an A, and that's the key of A major. Let's continue. Going up, we can see we get Father Charles goes down. D sharp, raise it a semitone, what do we get? We get an E. Let's keep going. Father, Charles, goes, down, and. Now you can see we've got an A sharp here. Raise that a semitone, gets us the key of B. Next, you can see that we get six sharps. Father, Charles, goes, down, and, ends. Oh, we have an E sharp. An E sharp is also known as an F. That's the enharmonic equivalent. We're having to double think this one. We better be careful. However, we still take that value there of an F and raise it a semitone. If we raise an F a semitone, then we get F sharp. So this is the key signature for F sharp. Moving on to the last sharp key, 
which uses all seven sharps, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. We can see that we get a B sharp. B sharp is the enharmonic equivalent of C, which is a much easier note to think of. And don't forget, we've already got this E sharp as well. So this key signature has two notes we have to double think. That's not good. But let's finish working out the key signature. If we take this C and we raise it a semitone, we can see we get the key signature for the key of C sharp major. Now hopefully you'll see that we've got C major, which is one key. Then we have seven flat keys and we have seven sharp keys. And in total, that gives us 15 keys. But if you look at your guitar and you think about it, we only have 12 notes. Each of those notes is the tonic for a key. So this is how I like to think of them on the guitar as key. I'm gonna use the E string because this is gonna tie into the grid. If you imagine that this was the fretboard, we had an E, an F, a G, an A, a B, a C, a D, and an E. Those keys are easy enough to figure out. And actually, all of them are sharp keys apart from the key of C, which has no sharps or flats. So we've got to fill out in between these notes what is going to be the best way to think about it. Now, if we look at F sharp, we can see that F sharp has a bit of double thinking to do. But the enharmonic equivalent of F sharp is also G flat. And that has a similar problem. We end up with a C flat, which is really a B. Personally, I find it easier to think of this as the key of F sharp because it's easier to think in sharps than it is in flats. And I find that F sharp is more of a rock key. Flat keys tend to be blues or jazz. That's quite a broad sweeping statement, but you will find that they are in flat keys to accommodate horn instruments. Now, as you can see from working out these keys here, we didn't end up with a key of G sharp. So what we have to do is we have to go for the default flat key. So if we think of this as A flat, then that's going to help you immensely. Now, if you think as well in the sharp keys, we didn't work out a key of A sharp. So let's go for the easy option, which is B flat, which has two flats. Nice and easy. We could have the key of C sharp in this gap here, but as you remember, that ends up with two enharmonic equivalents. So that means two notes we have to double think. So what we can do is we can go for the enharmonic equivalent of C sharp, which is D flat. The next note up in this 12 notes going up the fretboard, if you imagine this was 12th fret, this is open, you can see that we get a D sharp or an E flat. There were no D sharp key signatures in here. So let's go for E flat, which only has three flats in the key signature. So when we think of keys, now we can eliminate all the other nonsense keys that reduce the amount of double thinking you have to do with enharmonic equivalents. And when I say enharmonic equivalents, I mean the same sound that has two names. So what the heck has this got to do with this grid, Ricky? Well, let me show you. The grid, also known as the key grid, is a way of visualizing where you put your chords using two basic shapes. This one I call the L7 grid. The L is going to be minor chords and the seven is going to be major chords. And this works on the E and the A string. However, we use the E string to determine what key we are in because that's where the tonic lands. So let me just draw out an E string. Do you remember those keys we had before? Let me fill those in here. E, F, G, A, B, C, D and E. Now let me put in those other keys. F sharp and equally for argument's sake we could say G flat. A flat, that's easier to think about. B flat, D flat and E flat. And this is all on the thick E string. To make it easier I'll make it look a bit more like a string. There's the head note, the dot at the third fret, the dot at the fifth fret, dot at the seventh fret, the dot at the ninth fret and a double dot at the twelfth fret. So here's where the grid comes in. Remember I said there were two shapes well, the first shape we're going to look at is actually the seven shape. And if we look here, this note here is going to be our tonic. 
If you know your Roman numeral chords, you know that's chord one. Chord four is here. Chord five is here. Let me just circle that so that you can see that this is that seven shape. Next, we get chord two, chord three, and chord six. These three are minor chords. Let me draw this in with another color. You can see we get the L shape. Now what we have to do is we have to associate this with the key that we want to play. If we wanted to play the key of F, then we would move this system all the way to the F note there. This would be the first fret, this would be the third fret, and this would be the fifth fret. Now the reason this is important, because any chord that we make that falls on this string is going to be an E shape. The string denotes the shape that we make, and also, we'll see that we end up with two shapes. We end up with an E major shape or an E minor shape. Any chord that falls on the A string is going to be an A shape. This is all part of the cage system. So if you already know cage, this ties in with that. So here you could see we would play an F major. This would be a B flat major and this would be a C major. This would be G minor this would be A minor, and this would be D minor. This system moves up and down the neck, so we could equally slide it over to the third fret. This would mean that we now have a key of G major. That's pretty cool. And this is going to apply to any key that you want to think about. Wanted to be in the key of A flat, just move the whole thing up one fret. Remember, this is up and this is down. The numbers go up and the pitch of the strings go up. Now this is only going to work if you know your E and your A shape bar chords. Okay guys, I thought I'd best do some examples here on the guitar for you just to show you how this grid works. And remember what I said about the keys. This is the tonic for the key of E. This is the tonic for the key of F. This is the tonic for the key of F sharp. This is the tonic for the key of G. This is the tonic for the key of A flat. This is the tonic for the key of A, this is the tonic for the key of B flat, this is the tonic for the key of B, this is the tonic for the key of C, the tonic for the key of D flat, the tonic for the key of D, tonic for the key of E flat, and you can see when we hit 12, we're all the way back to E again. Now the reason this works is because each one of these hosts the grid. Let's look at the grid in the key of F. So we end up with this seven shape here. And this shows us which chords we need to play. Chord one, chord four, chord five. These are the major chords. So because this is on an E string, then what I need to do is put a full E shape on, a full E major chord shape on. That means I have to play it as a bar chord. If you can't play it as a bar chord, do it as a cheat. Bar chord, E. Now what I need to do is come over to the A string, and this is a B flat. However, the chord shape is an A shape. I'm going to use my third finger to hold all of that chord down. And then what I need to do is slide that up two frets to get the chord C. Moving on to the next part of the grid, you can see we get the L shape. That is for the minor chords in the key. This is chord two. And as you can see, I'm using an E minor shape here in my third and fourth fingers with my bar. Put my third and fourth fingers on first and then bar last. Move this up through the grid and I get an A minor here for chord three. Moving over, this note here is a D and that gives me my D minor chord. But I have to play this using an A minor shape. Remember, in the grid, any chord that falls on the A string is going to be an A shape. So we get an A minor shape. Can you see that? Put that together. Now that's really cool, because all I need to know now is what key I'm playing in and where to find the tonic. So say the song says that it is in the key of A flat, now all I do is find A flat. E, F, G, A flat, and I just apply the grid. And now you don't need to fear any key if it's in a key of B.
Now there's more we can do with the grid, but like I say, I'll include that in a lesson where we delve into the grid a little bit deeper. That's about as much as I want to get into this idea of the grid. But if you want to find out more about the grid, then watch this video coming up right now. Remember to subscribe, like the video if you got some value, and leave me a comment if this video has helped you out in any way. Thanks for watching.